Well, that's Tom's design. The bottom rack we set in the pan, and then we have the manifold, and the hose goes into each end, and then we turn the spigot on, and water comes out of four spigots mm -hmm. into um, a colander with a filter. Okay. Only barrier filtering, no chemicals, no, no nothing. Tom brings them in these barrels, these food grade barrels here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we run a hose. Just so. Okay. okay. So the water becomes lower and lower, mm -hmm. and then everything comes into here. Mm -hmm. So this salt, by the end of this week, we will start to see salt in here. Most recently, salt for table use in our world has come from sources that are stripped of all uh, trace minerals, and then iodine put back in it. But if you get closer and closer to it being a wet, uh, more grainy salt, then it's loaded with uh, trace minerals mm -hmm. and it is not a condiment anymore, it becomes a food. It becomes something that has nutritive value. Unlike a fair amount of stuff that's sold in the grocery store. Mm, why? Uh, necessity first. Um, when there were no uh, choices that seemed sustainable when the salt idea came. It seemed like something that wouldn't rely on a whole lot of outside influences. That we could do salt now with some technological help, or we could do it an old-fashioned way and fill buckets by hand if it comes to that. And so um, necessity first, but also love. I have wanted to be a farmer most of my life, and I never thought that it would be through salt. I think in order for it to, at this point, sustain us, um, I, I think we're going to have to become a little bit bigger. Some people say that we could become vast and really big if we wanted to, but I don't believe I want to. I, I had a, a business that was like that. Wilma took it away and Wilma can keep it. Um, I don't, so I don't want us to get so big. But I would like it to pay our bills, and I would like it to pay maybe a couple of other people's bills. And so that's what I see the future. I see a real hope that people will take a little more time and a little more effort to help each other learn. There are lots of skills out here that we have, uh, as, a, as a whole, that modern people have forgotten. There are still people in parts of the world who rely on those old techniques. They aren't gone. We've just gotten this silly idea that, you know, having a toaster oven makes us better than somebody who's cooking on a fire in Central Africa. And all that makes it different is that we can afford to buy the fuel at this point. We, mm -hmm. we trade a lot already. We trade anything that we can, we make a trade. And I think that that's an economy that has a real place in our world. I would love for other people to find inspiration wherever they are, whatever their situation is, and make something work. I mean, people could be choosing something different. In this country, people like their automobiles. They like their own personal automobile. They like the freedom it gives them. Please, give me a break, you know. It costs $4 a gallon to put fuel in my vehicle. I don't need freedom that bad. <laughs> I got all the freedom I need when I'm out here. I don't need it in the car. <laughs>